Foremost, a legend. <clears throat> the blue fish are knowledge functions. Blue with black is SI, blue with red is NI. The green fish are deliberation functions. Blue with uh, green with red is TI, green with black is FI. Red and black equal any, this fish, red and blue equal SE. And your interface functions, pink and blue equals FE, pink and black equals TE, orange equals both TE and FE. Talking, talking with famous people. Now, it is not that easy to remember. I have written the name of the function here on this as well. So, <clears throat> what I want to try to do is explain cardinal functions today using these fish. We've got four fields here. It's inside your brain, the world of media objects, words, life streams, etc., physical impact land, and your own body. We're going to pretend that each of these fish is a single function acting as a single person using just that function in isolation to the extent that they can. We're also going to pretend they're playing a game of hold them with these little cards. And they each get one card. That's it. And then they bet. So, what we want to do now is display how these things work out. So, when the dealer puts down this card, NI is knowing what its status is. It's an 8. SI is knowing how well 8's worked for them before, or in comparable situations they've seen on TV, perhaps. FI is knowing how they feel about that, where they're feeling, well, that's good, it's a low card, or they're feeling, that's bad, it's a high card. Um... TI is going to uh, approach this thing by saying, well, what are my probabilities of any random card winning against that? Expert intuition is going to look at its hand and say, uh, what possible hands beat mine if I beat that card? I mean, if I, if I, in terms of my pairing up with that card. Uh, expert feeling is going to be attending to what Asteroid Intuition thinks about his card, what TE thinks about his card, what TE thinks about his card, what SE thinks about his card. In other words, Effie's going to be trying to understand his own card by understanding the other people's perceptions of their own cards. So, let's see, TI draws first. And it's got a 15, 17. 8 plus 17 is 25. T.I. knows the rules of this game, that it's hard to get above 25. He's got a pretty good chance. He's probably going to bet this, but he'll probably defer and wait and try to see what other people do to glean more information, perhaps. N.I. gets a 2. N.I. knows 2 plus 8, 10 is going to lose, and they fold immediately. SI gets an 8. 13 plus 8. This is 13. 21. This is 17 plus 13. It's 30. SI knows that in the past, scores like 13 and 8, 21 have won hands. So he's thinking, maybe I'm going to win this hand. He's going to stay in and see. FI. Um, gets a 2. If I know that's really what they don't want, they fold. Expert intuition gets a 4. Expert intuition thinks, well, it's a 4. I mean, I could try to bluff them off. I don't know. I mean, let me see what happens before I fold. I'm not going to fold before anybody makes a bet anyway. Expert feeling draws this one card. 
However, Ashford Feeling is mostly concerned about how confident other people are with their cards. Ashford Feeling can see, I'm not very confident with Expert Intuition. Ashford Feeling can see, TI is very confident over here. Um, <coughs> Expert Feeling is probably unsure about SI, because SI is unsure about their own confidence. These two have folded, so they're irrelevant to the equation. Now TE looks at his card. TE gets a three. TE knows how the game works and recognizes that it's a betting game and so may decide to bet against anybody getting a very, very strong hand and bluff it out. Well, certainly possible. But seeing that this is a very low card, TE is going to smartly fold. SE gets a Okay, we'll call that an 11 because it's a knight, a knight of something. Because um, an 11 sees this 13 and figures, okay, I got a decent shot at this. As he bets right off the bat to see what kind of impact they have. Maybe they, everybody folds. The TE FE people get an extra card. Why? Because they're able to access data on both fields of the interface, which is mean the interface are dumb. Uh, FE gleans information from the extroverted sensing field and gleans and puts information on the external metaphysical field and uh, confers with either NI or SI to know about that information. So, what happens here then? Well, as he bets, TE knows they're still not in any good shape. Because they folded their other card. They fold. FE folds. They can tell that as he is confident, at least. They're not sure they believe him or not. But they're still waiting on this guy anyway. Expert in intuition thinks about about betting going over the top but he's got this guy behind him so he says well it might he might i don't know what he's gonna do so i'm just gonna fold si says hmm eight 13 21 hmm okay i call because this hand has served them well in the past so they call and lastly, we have TI. TI raises. Because TI knows that 17 plus 13 is 30. That's a high hand in this in this game. And uh, SI folds because they've experienced in the past that when people go over the top, they usually lose. And SE then. Pushes back. In other words, bets again. Three bets, it as it's called. Now TI is thinking, well, what could beat me? 18, 19, 20, 21? <sighs> okay, I fold. And the power of taking action, once again, means that the SC Dom wins, even though they don't have the best hand. Now, it could be the NI Dom would win, because the NI Dom is going to... probably not get fooled by bluffs and or just regression, whereas the more deliberative types are more likely to get pushed, pushed off their cards by that. Uh, it's an area of trouble for me when I play poker with my expert intuition, knowing whether or not I should the guy's bluffing or whatever. I think of all these different possibilities, and I can't really distinguish between them. So, I'm hoping that this is somewhat helpful. I would note that the NI person is knowing inside about either the external stuff or their own card or whatever.
The TI person is deliberating about their own card and imagining the other people's cards only in the abstract. What possible hands could a person have that would beat mine? Um, the SI is recalling either habits of the other players at the table or habits of themselves or what's worked for them before, what's failed for them before. The FI knows what they want, which might make it easier for them to fold. But of course, since they, in a larger sense, want to win, that may make it harder for them to fold. Um, the SE person wants to put pressure on people and make them make tough decisions. Well, if you really think I'm bluffing, then stake your whole stack on it, you know? The TE person, I think, is simply trying to find a find out if this is a a means by which they can come up with uh, a repeatable, you know, uh, system that they would use to succeed in this. And the FE person, especially when paired with NI, is assuming they don't really need to know much except about the confidence, the actual confidence of the other person. And if nobody's very confident, then they can win the hand just by betting. Because the lack of confidence will cause others to fold. So I hope that was actually explanatory in some sense, uh, or not unhelpful. Thanks for watching. Okay, friends. Hi, I'm Mr. Eric. I'm gonna do another fish video here. To try to explain functions. This is for an ENTP. This is my dominant. It's probably got one here. It's my tool. This is my third, this is my fourth, this is my fifth, this is my sixth, this is my sixth, this is my eighth. So why did I put them in that order, right? Well, because this also represents the internal metaphysical field inside your head. This represents the internal physical field inside your body. This represents the external physical field outside your body. And this represents the external metaphysical field, which is to say, the talking part of the world. Okay, so what you see here is my dominant nature is to put information out with the expert intuition as I'm doing right now. My tool function is to get information, primarily from here, but also somewhat from inside my own head, and parse it out and make sure it's going to validate when I put it out here. And the reason it needs to validate is because FE, my third slot, is both getting and putting information here. So, primarily what it's doing for me is, uh, in regards to this equation, is checking to see if being, you know, having my putting of information here validated here, also validated here. Because if it doesn't validate there, then um, what I, what happens is I get information with my FE from this field, which I then know with either NI or SI, the meaning of, depending on what I'm paired with in the cognitive function stack. My fourth slot function is SI, so it's down here. You'll note that my FE knows probably with NI before it knows with SI. Um, my FE does. Now, my TE, on the other hand, knows with SI before it knows with NI. Um, <clears throat> in the A slot function, we have SE. It's putting information on the external field, in other words, concrete action, but I should have it really kind of pointing upwards because it's taking its orders from me from extroverted intuition. I need to extrovertedly intuit. Whatever extroverted sensing needs to get done in order for me to be able to do this, then that's what it'll do. But if I don't need this to do this, then it'll stay right there. Um, <clears throat> you will note that both of these interface functions put and get information on both of the fields, although they do so in different ways. FE is looking for information about the people's perceptions, feelings, emotions, etc. Uh, from the words they say on this field and the physical expressions or gestures they make on this field. TE is looking for utility on the words on this field and effectiveness on uh, here. So in other words, a useful answer that proves effective. Um, 
obviously if you're a different type, your fish line up differently, right? So, uh, that's it for this video.